Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Okay, several people passed along this story to me out of Texas. It's scary. It's another scam. But, you know, one of the recurring themes with scams is a lot of people say, well, Steve, when you describe the scam and someone got ripped off by that, boy, only stupid people or gullible people or old people or people who are unaware of how things work would get ripped off like that. And yet, we keep hearing stories of people who get ripped off, who don't fall into those typical groups. So we've talked previously about how somebody had submitted some fake bills to a municipality and gotten several million dollars of payment for a bridge they didn't build. Uh, I mentioned recently about a police officer in Vancouver uh, had gotten his bank accounts drained, and he got his money back, but again, that was through a weird uh, situation with with a cell phone. And so now here's one out of Texas. Phishing scam with a PH fish. Phishing scam robs Texas school district of $2.3 million. This is a school district in Texas that's now missing over $2 million because of one of these scams. Uh, Tom Ozimek wrote the story. Authorities are investigating an email scam that cheated a Texas school district out of millions of dollars, according to a spokesperson there. Uh, Angel Vidal, director of communications of the Manor Independent School District, said in a news release that the district had fallen prey to a phishing scheme. That's a fraudulent practice of using email or other messaging systems to get sensitive information that can then be exploited for financial gain. Uh, Vidal said the Manor Police Department, along with the FBI, is looking into the incident involving a phishing email scam that resulted in the loss of approximately $2.3 million to the school district. The uh, spokesperson then said that the investigation is continuing and they have strong leads in the case, but the money's gone. Now, can they get it back? Depends on where it went. Uh, Can they get reimbursed through insurance? Possibly, but we'll see. The scam involved three separate transactions dating back to November of last year. Uh, That's according to the local police department and a detective there named Ann Lopez who was speaking to K-E-Y-E or (laughs) K-I. Lopez told the news outlet that scams are unbiased. They reach out, uh, excuse me, they reach anyone, anywhere, anytime. The affected school district serves over 9,600 students, according to its Facebook page. Uh, And one person wrote in the comments section that the money was for our technology and upgrading computers, adding that this is our children who are being stolen from. That's true. The district says we recognize the importance of serving others, celebrating success, and preparing our students for life. Uh, you think they'd also say something about protecting the money that's been entrusted to us, but I guess not there. The FBI says internet crimes like phishing steal millions of dollars each year from victims. Phishing is also referred to apparently as vishing, smishing, or farming, according to the FBI. I've never heard of vishing, smishing, or farming with a PH. Um, it's often used in conjunction with a spoofed email. And I've talked about that before. You get an email that tells you that you need to confirm something about your bank account, about your YouTube account, about your... <laughs> uh, I get them all the time about my PayPal account, which I haven't got. I haven't got a PayPal account. I say, hey, your PayPal account needs to be re-verified. Your email's about to be shut down. Your YouTube account's about to be demonetized. And these things are all coming from fake email addresses. So you have to explain to people your workers, your employees, your friends, your family, your relatives, that when you get an email like that, don't just click on it. There's no email you're going to get that you need to click on immediately anyways, okay? So um, the FBI says explaining that in their fraudulent correspondence, perpetrators often pose as a representative of a legitimate business or institution in order to gain the victim's trust. Besides email, criminals will also use text messages to try and get users to divulge sensitive information like passwords, credit card numbers, and bank account information. And, you know, I've actually gotten some really dumb texts. And I, I you know, apparently people will sit there and, 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 and send out either bulk text or just text random numbers. And I got a text one day and a guy goes, hey, it's Bob, remember me? And I look at the phone number and, you know, I go, no, you got the wrong number. And he goes, no, we went to school together. We used to ride the bus together. (laughs) Now, I don't want you to think I'm elitist or anything, but I've never ridden a school bus to get to school. That's not how I got to school. I rode in a carpool, okay? Long story. But I never rode a school bus to get to school. 
uh, like I said, carpooled. And then later on, I drove myself. Uh, and then later on, I went to college where I drove myself. But I, I never rode a school bus. Goes, Bob, no, 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 we rode a school bus together. He goes, I, I, I knew your sister. <laughs> Viewers of my channel, no, I have no sisters. Five brothers, no sisters. So, you know, and I just, I blocked the number. You know, you can do that these days. But the point is that, that they, they send these messages out hoping someone out there is going to be named Bob who rode a school bus. Go, oh, I remember, <laughs> I remember you. <laughs> Special Agent Jake Frith of the Alabama Attorney General's Office discussed a case involving around a half a million cell phone numbers that were targeted by a phishing scam in Alabama. There, a fraudster sent a raft of identical text messages asking users to click a link to verify their bank account information, which then took unsuspecting users to a fake website. And it's so easy for them to set up a... They send you an email that's got the logo of the bank in it. They send you a link that looks real. You go there. It looks like a real website. And, of course, all they've done is they've just spoofed the entire website on a different server. And then they get you to enter your, your password and your, and your account number and blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't work for some weird reason. And while you're dealing with that, they're just going to take your information, stick it in the real website, steal all your money. And by the time you figure it out, the money's gone. Now, you might get the money back. You might. But we don't want these people to get any money. Um... Frith said it was a fairly legitimate looking website other than the information it was asking for. People were requested submit to submit personal financial information. Dozens of victims submitted their data, allowing the perpetrator to steal thousands of dollars. And by the way, for all the words I pronounce funny, I often say words and people say, I, you mispronounced that word. I routinely say data and no one's corrected me on that. And I know that the common pronunciation is often data. Uh, and I'm, I'm waiting for someone to say, Steve, you mispronounced the word Data should be data, but <laughs> by the way, this is how my mind works. I'm reading stories, and the whole time I'm going, should I pronounce this word this way or this word this way? For every single word. <laughs> Within an hour, the fraudster had made himself debit cards with the victim's account information and then began to withdraw money from various ATMs, stealing whatever the daily ATM maximum was from each account, according to the FBI. The Federal Trade Commission, or the FTC, says that to protect themselves against a phishing attack, people should install security software on their computers and run software updates on their phones when prompted. And like we've said repeatedly, don't click on those emails. Don't click on links to the emails unless they're from an extremely trusted source. And even then, you got to be careful, you know. So the agency also urges people to protect their accounts by using multi-factor authentication and regularly back up their data to guard it against loss. <laughs> um, and that, of course, is is the thing. So, you know, they, they've lost here, what is it, $2 million? $2.3 million uh, in a phishing attack. Uh, the municipality, I think it was in Colorado, but someplace out west that paid for a bridge, but they gave the money to the wrong people, a couple million dollars. And um, it's the same scam just over and over again. And, they, and, they, and, they, and they, they go fishing by sending out millions and millions and millions of pieces of bait. And then when somebody takes it, they get you and they, they take your money. Like I said, you might get the money back. It depends. It depends. You know, some of these things might be insured. Some of them might not be insured. But the whole point is that, like, for instance, whenever we hear about someone who got their money back, they talk about what it has to, was to go through and do all that and get all the money back. It's an extremely difficult process. You know, it's like people I know who've lost their wallets with credit cards in them. You know, you just, you're going to spend an afternoon at least, if not more, calling credit card companies going, yeah, I don't know. My, my, you know, I, I might find it. It might get turned in. I don't know. But you got to call credit card companies and get them shut off, blah, 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 get new ones issued. And yeah, <laughs> starting to sound like an old guy, <laughs> for which I apologize. But the point is, again, this stuff is, you know, out there. It's more nefarious than you think. It evolves. Uh, people fall for it who you might think shouldn't, but they do because that's how it can happen. So someday you turn your computer on, you're not paying attention, you see an email, you think you recognize the name, you click on it, next thing you know, you're up $2.3 million. <laughs> so there you go. And the question is, is it data or data? And I'm not talking about the guy on Star Trek. Questions, comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. There's your side, there's my side, and then there's the truth.